into the talk of champions. We're about to get ready for Alabama returning home to take on Arkansas after a big trip to College Station, a big win. This guy was there. He's Tyler Watts, former Alabama quarterback, now analyst on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Fun call with Chris Stewart? Great call. Yeah. We had a great time at that one. Obviously, anytime Alabama wins, makes it much more enjoyable. But there was plenty of ups and downs, which as a broadcaster, you love. Now, you hate the penalties, but all the plays that were made by the guys out there on the field, especially that defensive unit, made it for an extremely exciting broadcast. Okay, you ready for a good broadcasting transition? Down 17, 10 at the half. I thought it was a little hairy at the time. You know what you need if things get hairy? Our friends at Manscaped. This is you right here, by the way. This is for you. I got a parting gift. This is the handyman right here. The manscape for your face on the road. Just throw this into your USB port, charge it down the road. You can shave on your way to meet the clients. It's your gift there with our friends at Manscaped. That's awesome. Now, we got our own promo code here. So if you'd like to support Tyler right here, TALK20 is the promo code. TALK20 is the promo code. When you go to manscaped.com, manscaped.com, you can do this for your face. They got some for your ears and nose hair. God, I'm close to getting to that age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already there. Chest hair and, as Tyler was asking earlier, some stuff, the weed whacker from below the belt. Jesus. The weed whacker. It's all with manscaped.com. Manscaped.com. TALK20 is the promo code. You get 20% off with our friends at Manscaped. I'll make sure I'll give this back to you before That's you That's new, leave. right? It's not used. It is it's brand new. It's okay. just for you. Um, but it was 17, 10 and a half. So things didn't go perfect for Alabama on this trip there. But let's start, as we did last week, with the positives. And one of the big positives was, was to me, play calling. I want to start with play calling because Tommy Reese and the offensive staff apparently saw something on tape on a matchup with either Burton or Bond on their DBs that they liked because they didn't go to it once, they didn't go to it twice, they went to it 12 times with Jermaine, caught nine of them, went to it nine times with Bond, caught seven of them. They saw something they liked in those matchups. Okay, so it was, it's, I'm, I'm going to say that it's partly, yeah, we, we saw something that we could take advantage of it as well as we need to find something else because we can't do run between the tackles. That Texas a and in front was extremely good. They, they were as advertised. Strong up front, linebackers got off blocks, and none of them missed tackles in the open field. Extremely solid up front. Very difficult for Alabama to run the ball between the tackles. So you had to find something. And after you poke and prod trying to find where's the weakness of this defense, and I think just after one or two receptions, you realize DeBerry can't cover any of our receivers. He's pushing off. We're creating separation. And if he sits, we're running right past him. So it was, I think, a game time thing of, we've got this. Anytime we need to go to it, we can exploit these DBs because our offensive line is holding up, we're having time to throw the ball downfield, and our wide receivers are creating separation. Well, go back to the offensive line for a second, because there was six sacks in this game. So sometimes they didn't hold up. Break it down, though. What you also saw was him holding onto the ball because maybe coverage was good downfield. And then as he started moving around the pocket, his eyes lowered. He started focusing on the rush because most of the time it was only a four or five man rush. There were a couple of times where they brought more than we could block. That's going to happen. But mostly it was his eyes came down. He wasn't keeping his eyes downfield. And there were some guys coming open late within the five to ten yard range that he just did not see. Okay, let's get back to Burton for a second because he's a guy – um, he's always very animated. He's a talker. Um, he, you know, some people do that. It juices them up. It makes them play harder. It's self-motivation. Um, this, this was his breakout game. This was a big game. Is Jermaine Burton a guy that maybe the light has gone off? This can be the Jermaine Burton we see the rest of the year? It's only a breakout game if he's able to replicate it. And that is 100% up to him. What's between the years there? Does he motivate himself now to make that the bar and the standard of how he's going to go out there and perform? He comes to Alabama because he wants more targets. He gets more targets last week. He makes the most of it. He can set the tone and the precedent on how many times the ball is thrown to him based on his effort, his ability to run routes and create separation and get open, and his attitude, quite yeah. honestly. So I think it's wholly up to him as to whether he becomes that alpha number one A target or if he kind of rescinds back into the old Jermaine Burton that we've seen for the first four or five games this year. Well, about a week ago, before their last win, we heard Jamar, Jamar Chase say, I guess it was a week ago Sunday, uh, they were asking him about the slow performance in, the, in Joe Burrow and the Bengals were off to a bad start. And Jamar Chase said, I'm open every play. I'm open every play. 
of the receivers you've met in your life as a quarterback and an analyst, do you feel like most receivers think they're open every play? They all think they're open. But Jamar <laughs> Chase is open, even if he's close. He's open because he's going to make a way to find that. Now, most receivers think that they are open, and, and quite honestly, they, they very well may be. The difference is, is they're not always in the progression. They're not always the one, two, or three target as intended when drawn up by the offensive coordinator. So they can be open at a certain time when you're looking as a quarterback to the left. He could be open on the right, and we, by the time you get back to him, he's not open anymore. The, their whole role may be to clear out and open up another route coming underneath or over top or whatever to put stress on a particular guy with the intentions of throwing elsewhere. Um, th that kind of things happen. Those, those things happen. You know, coverages break down, and a guy that you're not reading may come wide open. Um, so, yeah, it does happen, but Jermaine Burton, you know that he's coming back to the huddle saying, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, because he's feeling it. He's confident in, in, in how he's performing that day. And when you get a, a hot hand like that, like in basketball or any other sports, you've got to feed him. You've got to continue to throw the ball to him. I want to ask you a receiver question first, but another one of our great sponsors here is the Watts Agency. Tyler Watts, when he's not talking Alabama football, <laughs> is talking insurance with you. And if not with you yet, here's why you should switch to the Watts Agency. You need to open up your billing. You need to take a look at it. Now, price is one thing, but there's uh, we always talk about this. There, there's two price points in any transaction, especially when it comes to insurance. There's the cost of the transaction itself, how much you're paying for your insurance, and then there's the cost at the time of the accident. How are you, are you underinsured? Do you have enough coverage to protect you and your family? You need to give us a call at 205-822-5477 or reach us at TylerWattsInsurance.com. You know, one thing I'm interested about, and I saw Kurt Warner uh, talking about this in relation to Dak Prescott, and he used some tape of two guys running slant routes and they both ran them at the same depth and the quarterback was supposed to read the linebacker on which one to throw the inside or the outside depending on what that linebacker did and he said they both run them at the same depth I, he, was, hasn't, he hasn't made the linebacker move, so I can't read yeah. either one. So it's an impossible put, situation for the quarterback. You put no stress on that defensive guy to make a decision. And right. if he doesn't have to make a decision, he's not going to. And I can't read him if he's not making a decision on A or B, left or right. So the route run has stressed the quarterback in this situation. So not everything is the quarterback's fault. So my question as it pertains to Alabama, how's our guys at running routes? Are they good route runners? Is that something they're getting better at? Were they better at it this past Saturday? So, you know, spacing is so much in the passing game. Um, I'm honestly, I don't. Look, I haven't been a halfway decent wide receiver since I was 10 years old in the backyard. <laughs> okay, I was pretty doggone good then. Right. But the, they're, I know when I go down there and watch them in practice, they're quick, they're fast, they're able to create separation, they come out of breaks fast, all the intangibles that are involved with route running. But there's also that X factor that you can't teach. It doesn't really show up on a stat line. It's just the ability to bend a guy, create space like what a Travis Kelsey does. You don't draw that up on a board, what he does. He understands spacing and where defenses are and presses them to create more open space. And the really good receivers are able to do that. And the ones that are just good at X to you know, a, point A to point B to point C, they struggle a little bit. Yeah, I, mean, I think this is interesting for the fans, too, because when you see it drawn up on the board, it's a straight line when it does this, right? Yeah, you can take a ruler and draw every route. Yeah, but, but that, that's not how the game's played. That's play. not how the game's played. And how much of football now is that, okay, I'm running a route, do I have options on the route I run depending on how the leverage is and what the hips are doing for the DB? Is that something as a receiver I'm reading and I read that and off of what the DB does and how he's covering me, do I turn it in, do I stop, or do I go? Is that, is that an option by me? I think, I think a lot of times it is. Most offensive coordinators now, they don't want to be wrong with their play call. So they build in depending on how, how intelligent their players are with understanding the concepts of what they're trying to achieve as well as their offense playing within it. They give them certain options based on what a defense presents because you can't predict everything. Defenses are so multiple now and what the looks that they give you pre-snap versus what they go to post-snap that you have to be able to adjust and amend on the fly and that comes through experience and it comes through multiple reps. Yeah. I like where the receivers are right now. I, like I think they're the getting they're, better. Yeah. I think they're getting better. And one good thing, you think about where we were three months ago coming out of camp, it was, oh, my God, they can't catch the ball. A lot of drops. Well, knock on wood, they're doing a pretty good job of hauling these suckers in. Knock on right uh, Little woodhead. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> speaking of manscaped. And then... Uh, <laughs> 
they're doing a good job of hauling the ball in, so now it's just creating separation and finding those mismatches throughout the course of the game, and the guys continue to work in. We're still running a lot of receivers out there, but as the course of play went on in that Texas A&M game, you really started seeing just a couple guys out there on the field that were, hey, these are who we trust. Okay, we're going to get right back to that game in College Station. Look ahead to Arkansas coming up. <clears throat> Show being brought to you, Talk of Champions, by our friends at Roback, roback.com. Promo code TNR20, TNR20. 20% off your first purchase there with roback.com. Great hoodies and other outerwear that you can get this time of year as the temperatures change for game day and also for your golf outing this time of year. Roback.com, that's with an R, roback.com. Promo code TNR20, 20% percent off that purchase there some great gear with our friends at Roback. So we go back to the win at, against Texas A&M. We talked about the receivers in the big game Burton and Bond, but th that was the game for Jalen Milrow and we break him down every week. Um, but you know, he was a guy that had one interception, had six sacks, but the dude never looked like he he panicked one second of that contest. You know, and just like in the old Miss game a few weeks prior where he takes a huge hit but delivers a strike in the end zone to, to hell uh, for a touchdown. He pops up. He's been a different player ever since then. He took a hit down close to the red zone where he gets drilled in the back. We didn't see the pressure coming. We didn't have a guy to, to help block that, that, th that fourth guy or fifth guy off the edge. And he gets squared up, fumbles the ball. We're able to recover it, and he immediately reply, responds. So he is growing as a player of being able to push the last play behind him and be able to perform the next one. Unfortunately, there's a lot of still up and down. We see throws at wide, over, wide open receivers. You throw it 15 yards over the head to immediately come back the very next play and drop a dime into coverage. Jermaine Burton had that little mm -hmm. crossing route. I mean, you couldn't throw the ball any better than that. So we're seeing a little bit of everything, but he's continuing to take strides, steps in the right direction. Um, so he's continuing to grow in the position. You know, sometimes in a game, things happen and you're forced into a role that it, you never wake up thinking you're going to be in. And I thought what Will Reichard did on Saturday was amazing because Anaya Smith is one of the nation's best return guys. Mm -hmm. And Burnup gets hurt, and here comes Will Reichard, who isn't called on to punt. I know they probably practice it because he was so good at it. But he averaged 41 and a half yards a punt with great hang time that there was only one return. Most of it was fair catches against one of the best returners in yeah. the world. Uh, explain to me, as a guy who played the game and probably doesn't really consider kickers athletes, some of you guys who play positions look down at the kickers, what Riker was able to do, you have, you, you, you guys always make fun of kickers sometimes. What Riker did was amazing to me, you quarterback. Quarterback, the, the kicker are the only people a quarterback can make fun of. So it's kind of like the whole Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi thing. You know, we always look down on somebody. Um, no, he's a he's a tremendous asset to this football team. His ability not only to win the field goals, but be able to come out in a backup role. I think every head coach across the country will take a 42 to 43 yard punt with no return. They'll take that all day every long. Let's, let's just turn the field position. You give me 42, 43 yards, and I'm happy as can be. Um, he, look, he's a mature guy, and you think about the first punt that he had. He's backed up in the end zone. Now, me and you would have puckered up yeah. just a little bit, no, right? Absolutely. But I he's was calm, puckered watching it. He's, I bet you were. He's calm and collective, though, because he's been in these situations before, and it's nothing to him. Catches the ball, punts it down the field, held, holds his leg up there, gets run into it, and is, is absolutely irritated that he didn't get at least a running into the kicker penalty. He's a guy that you can depend on. And we're very, very appreciative. And if you don't believe that, go back and watch film for the last 15, 20 years. We have had some questionable times where punting is not something that you could really depend on, nor could you depend on field goal kicking. Yeah, there's been national championships, one with some shanks and hooked with lefts and rights. And, and some opportunities that slip through the fingers because of the same. Yeah, speaking of puckering up, always Manscaped, manscaped.com right there. Promo code TALK20, TALK20. Danger close if you're puckering up. <laughs> They keep it safe when you're weed whacking down below there. It's for the uh, facial only, Jim. That one is. That one is. We got tools for everywhere on the body, though. Make all the uh, all the right decisions with our friends at Manscaped. Talk twenty, the promo code. Help us out with that Talk Twenty promo code. Manscaped.com. Get an injury in the secondary. 
all right? And I want to give another shout out. So we asked Terry on Arnold. He didn't wake up thinking he was going to play star. He thought he was going to be the cornerback yeah. all day. Now you get an injury, and here comes Trey Amos in to play corner, and they move Terry on Arnold over to star. Why do you change two positions because of an injury and not just replace the star position? Well, that star position is so multiple in what it's asked to do. So you're really looking on someone who understands the whole concepts of the defense and all the variations that go into it. Malachi Moore, because of all the years of experience that he has, he's that number one guy. But when he goes down and gets rolled up on a tackle, he comes out. Now you got to put your next best guy into it because you're playing a lot of nickel packages. Trey Amos, you get him over at the corner. I'm not saying corner's easy by any stretch, but it's, hey, this is your guy. Lock him down. You're playing man coverage. A lot less variables that go into play. So you need the more seasoned player, the veteran, to be able to fill in. And, yeah. and look, these are all combinations that you're trying to anticipate throughout the course of fall camp and leading up to this. You're practicing them every week. He's down, he go in, you're getting plenty of reps here so that everyone understands their roles. Um, the offensive line, you talked about having um, some really good moments in that game. More good moments than bad moments. There were a few sacks, but more good moments than bad moments. What do you think of Jaden Roberts' play forced in there? Him out. Yeah. I, I thought he did a good job. He brought a lot of energy there. Um, you know, they really didn't, weren't able to generate anything offensively running the football. But it wasn't because we were missing guys. It was simply because they're really talented. Or they would drop down an extra guy that we just couldn't block, and it was a one-on-one -on -one situation, which normally you'll take. They were just making the plays. But I thought he brought a lot of energy. He had several false starts, which are completely unacceptable. But that's a, that's a stepping stone. That's something that you learn from. That game experience, you're never going to have a more hostile environment until you get to Jordan Hare later in the season. So for him to go in there and play as well as he did, that's a huge check in the positive column. What about uh, what about the 14 penalties? What do you what do you think it's of that? Just, it, it, it's concerning because so many of them were mental errors that are unforced. They're, they're just focus and concentration. Are you disciplined enough to hold your water in there as an offensive lineman and, and not have the false start? And we, we talk about this every week. This football team cannot hurt itself when it works so hard to get into favorable down and distances on first and second down to then have a false start to back them up. And every time that we do that, we come up just shy of a first down. So it ends up being the difference. Yeah, drive killers are what they end up being. Nick talks about that all the time. I'm trying to make sure I've got everything from this game that I really wanted to get to before we moved to talk in Arkansas. No, you have not. What? Justin Aboyby had the game of his life. There you go. The, the defensive line was fantastic. Game of his life. Yeah. Someone that we really haven't, he didn't get a lot of sacks because of you know the Chris Braswells and Dallas Turners that are all, also on the offensive line. But Tim Keenan being a leading tackler, Caleb Downs continuing to have the game that he did with the interception, oh, and he's the a second. Yeah. He's a second leading tackler on the team. Uh, but Justin Aboyby, two big sacks, one of them for the safety. He had the game, the best game that I've seen him in his Alabama career. Yeah, and I, I should have brought up Caleb's interception because that was the one turnover, and you thought, okay, that was a bad turnover. The drive was really working, and to get back, get that interception back, that's when Immediately. I thought yeah. Alabama's going to win this game. Yeah. And yeah. that's when the tables turn. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful uh, moment there. Let's look ahead to Arkansas coming to Brian Denny Stadium. We'll do that by telling you about our friends at My Bookie. If you've got some plays, whether it's in the NFL, college football, or of course in the playoffs in Major League Baseball, My Bookie can do it for you. MyBookie.ag. MyBookie.ag is the website you go to. Use the promo code Next Round, and right now you still can get that 110% deposit bonus. 110% deposit bonus. If you use the promo code next round, sign up. That's going to go away very quick, quickly. MyBookie.ag, MyBookie.ag. And while you're signing up there, get some good winning plays from Lance'sLock.com, Lance'sLock.com. All right, Arkansas is coming to town. They're on a four-game losing streak. But this becomes, to me, a little mental toughness for this team. Everything's good for you coming out of College Station. Home game against an opponent that nobody in the country is saying you're going to lose to. It's a 19 and a half point spread at mybookie.ag. Wow. wow. And and this Arkansas team is trying to save its season, oh. and they got a veteran quarterback in KJ Jefferson. When you when you think of Arkansas football, what do you think of first with Sam Pittman as the head coach? I, I think that the first thought is that his players love playing for him. He's a motivational guy. He he buys into them. He gets the most out of them from an effort standpoint. That's the first thing that you think of. Now lay eyes on them. Watch them throughout the course of the season and tell me what you think of them. This is a team that has no quit in them whatsoever. And the 19-point spread, that's yeah. huge. Because when I watch Arkansas, 
I see a one possession game against LSU where if they're able to punch the ball in in the first quarter a couple of times inside the red zone instead of having to settle for field goals, they win that ball game. In Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge. A one possession game against Ole Miss late in the fourth quarter. And, um, and the same thing against Texas A&M to where although they can't run the ball at all and they're not getting the one-on-one shots downfield like what Alabama did last year, their defense is keeping them in the ball game. They're hanging in there just, just on the cusp of being able to make it a competitive game until a breakdown in special teams. So this is a football team that is not been getting run off the field. They've been losing, but it's been much closer than I think people realize all season long. you got a big, strong quarterback who's hard to bring down in the, in the pocket. People don't realize how good of a thrower he is when he gets a clean pocket. And even when people, kind of like a Jared Lorenzen from Kentucky, yes. people could be hanging on him and he still is able to throw the ball downfield and make some plays happen. You've got good wide receivers. You don't see a whole lot in the running game, but you know with Rocket Sanders, you have a threat there. And then defensively, and it just make you earn everything. They're, they just It's one of those teams where they're not near as talented, but, man, they're going to fight you. Rocket Sanders has been banged up, so the running numbers have not been impressive, um, even with K.J. Jefferson running the football. This offensive line has given up, uh, of Arkansas, has given up some protection with K.J. Jefferson, which means it's another big opportunity for the Alabama defensive line. But when you're one-dimensional, those are the type of, of things that present themselves. When you can't run the ball effectively and be balanced, me as a defensive guy, I'm teeing off. I'm coming after you because all you can do is throw the ball. So some of those new numbers are a little bit skewed. Um, but look, they have the pieces, and as you mentioned, they're trying to salvage whatever they can. And as long as they believe in their head coach, which I believe that they do, this is an Arkansas team that potentially, if you don't come out early and are sharp, they're going to make it a rough day for you. Uh, the best thing they do is defend the run which means it'll be another challenging day for Alabama trying to run the football. You feel more comfortable Better. because of what Jalen Milrow showed this past week of it saying, okay, we can't run it. You go throw to win it. Well, so you feel a little bit more confident that if that becomes the game, that Alabama can they're climb good. the mountain. They're good, but they're not, they're not to the level that Texas A&M was. So I, see, I still think that Alabama is going to have some opportunities to run the ball, whether it be on the edge or up the middle. They're going to have plenty of opportunities to really kind of control that. But I think Alabama now – really has a chance to be much more balanced in what they're doing. And if they're able to stay ahead of the change, that makes them that much more dangerous. Okay, back at Brian Denny Stadium this week. It's an 11 o'clock kick. More on that in just a second because I'm going to ask Tyler about fifth grade science. But I want to remind you, mybookie.ag, mybookie.ag. If you want, and we always tell you, you should never do this to try to make a living. This is for entertainment purposes only. If you want to put a little wager on a football game or the you know baseball playoffs, mybookie.ag. Use the promo code next round, mybookie.ag, promo code next round. Get a one. 110% deposit bonus because you watch the talk of champions here. Just throw that in there. Next round the promo code, mybookie.ag and get all your plays at lanceslock.com. All right, so at, I think it's 12.08 on Saturday there's going to be a, a solar eclipse. Fifth grade science, are you supposed to look directly at a solar eclipse? Absolutely. You want to stare at it as long as you possibly can because <laughs> he who stares at it the longest wins. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me y'all didn't do that back in the 007. No, we did not. You did not want to try to stay. You, Man, what's that up there? I you, know how y'all are. <laughs> Dude, you, you end up burning your your eyeballs. Off, the, off your face. Don't look at it. I'm telling you and Chris Stewart, don't, or you and Eli, don't look at it. Will we be able to see it in all seriousness? Um, it'll be partial here. Why are you looking up at the scene? Because I'm trying to think of where it will be in the sky. It'll be over here for you. Um, I, the overhang, I don't think you'll be able it's to gonna see it. It's going to be in the north? Um, no, I mean, you're this, well, you're right. We, I'm this, on the I'm, east side. I'm on the old press box. You're right. So you're over here now. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be slow. I think it'll be behind you. You won't be able to see it. Okay. Don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I forgot. Which no, what you got to do is get a great big old cardboard box. That's how you look at it. You punch a couple holes in it. You look at the reflection or something or another. Yeah. Or you just get some really good sunglasses. Or watch it on TV. That's the best. That's way. right. Just enjoy the game. Don't look up at the sun. And then go home on TV. I'm sure they'll show it a lot on television. At 12.08, I'm not going to be focused on the sun. I'm going to be concerned a little bit about the performance of Alabama, though. Are they handling <laughs> business, or have we got, an, we got our hands full? Dude, it's an 11 o'clock kick with two teams that will run the ball a little bit if they can. So at 12.08, it'll be about two minutes left. In the, in, first the in the second quarter. Okay, second quarter. Two minutes left in the second quarter. You'll be thinking about, can I get to the hot dog lying in the press box before they're all gone? Because I'm not there to bring them to you, which I've done in the past. 
Thank you, Jim. No, I don't think I did it for you. I think you I did it for did. John Parker you did Wilson. did it for John Parker. That's right. I did it for the other guy, John Parker Wilson. Or as we call them, the good old days. You got to earn your keep, don't you, baby? <laughs> you do. Next time I'm at the Tennessee game, I'll bring you hot dogs at halftime. Do you like it with the chopped up stuff already on it, or you like it plain? Yes. Both? As long as you, it, it, it's going to be with love from you. Yes. Therefore, absolutely. I will not eat it. Speaking of love, how about our friends at Manscaped? That's where I was concerned you were going with this, <laughs> this one. This is yours right here, manscaped.com. Manscaped.com. Promo code TALK20. That's our promo code. code. Nobody else's. TALK20. Help us out. Manscaped.com. It is a great gift for the holidays. Take care of your uh, man in your life or yourself. Manscaped.com. The um, handyman. Uh, talk I'm 20. concerned you're going to name, that's going to be your new pet name. That's a little <laughs> concerning. All right. That's the talk of champions.